In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, addition, subtraction, and estimation with rational numbers. And in this particular video, we'll talk about mixed numbers, properties of addition for rational numbers, subtraction of rational numbers, and estimation with rational numbers. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about is addition of rational numbers. Here we have the aerial model as a uh, model for illustrating graphically, well, illustrating uh, what rational numbers, how we can add rational numbers. In this case here, in this illustration, we have two out of five pieces shaded. That represents two-fifths. And then in this one, we have one out of five of these pieces shaded. That's one-fifth. So if we add two-fifths and one-fifths, we have a total of three out of five shaded pieces, which is a representation of three-fifths. The second model is a number line model. In this case here, we have a number line from 0 to 1, and notice that it's sectioned off by in, uh, in fifths. So here, if we add two-fifths by going two-fifths of the way from 0, and then add another one-fifth, that's another one-fifth of the way from two-fifths, we end up at three-fifths. So this number line model can be a representation of two-fifths plus one-fifth equals to three-fifths. Okay, now let's look at the addition of rational numbers with like denominators. If you have A over B and C over B, they're both rational numbers, then A over B plus C over B is going to be equal to A plus C over B. In other words, we just add the numerators and keep the same denominator. Okay, So that two-fifths plus the one-fifth equals the three-fifths. That's pretty much we were adding two fractions with the same denominators. Okay, Now in this case, let's say we have unlike denominators. A over B and C over B, and that should be C over D by the way, those are rational numbers. So let me correct that. Okay, that should be C over D. They're rational numbers. And then you have A over B plus C over D. That's going to be equal to AD plus CB divided by B times D. What they did was multiply the two denominators together and came up with the equivalent uh, numerators that will be equivalent with the common denominator. Because basically, you're going to find the common denominator and then you're going to write those fractions as equivalent fractions that contain that common denominator. Like in this case here, two-thirds plus one-fourth. Here they use the common denominator. They multiply three times four. That's going to be 12. But if I want to make two-thirds have a denominator of 12, it'll have, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by four to get eight over 12. And for one-fourth, if I want to make that denominator a 12, have, make one-fourth have a denominator of 12, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by three to get three over 12. So 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths will be equal to 11 twelfths. That's the final answer. And here's some examples of just this. And I'm going to work through a couple of these. In this one, we got 2 fifths plus 14 over 21. I mean 2 fifteenths plus, 14, plus 4 over 21. Okay, now, the way we do this is that the least common denominator for 15 and 21. We need that least common denominator. That's going to be 105. So I'm going to say LCD equals 105. Now, to solve this, if I want to make that 15 have a come make that denominator 15 105, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 7. And for the 4 over 21, if I want to make that 21, 105, to be my least common denominator, the numerator, 
and the denominator must be multiplied by 5. Okay, so in this case here, 2 times 17, that's 14. I mean, 2 times 7, that's 14. Over 15 times 7, that's 105. Plus, for the 4 over 21 times 5 over 5, 4 times 5 is 20. And 15, well, 21 times 5, that's 105. And then if we add, so now we have fractions with the same denominator, we can add those two. 14 plus 20 is 34 over 105. Okay. And I do not think we can reduce 13, I mean 34 over 105 in simplest form. So this is the answer in simplest form. 34 over 105. Okay. Now look at part B. We got 2 over negative 3 plus 1 fifth. 2 over negative 3 plus 1 fifth. Well, let's say this. I'm going to make the 2 negative and the 3 positive. Because 2 over negative 3 is the same as negative 2 over 3. And then plus 1 fifth. Now I need the LCD, or the least common denominator, of 3 and 5. In this case, it's going to be 15. So now we want an equivalent fraction for negative 2 thirds and 1 fifth. For the negative 2 thirds, if I want to make this equivalent fraction have a denominator of 15, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5. And then for the 1 fifth, if I want to make 1 fifth an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 15, the numerator and the denominator must be multiplied by 3. And when I simplify this, negative 2 times 5, that's negative 10 over 15 plus 1 times 3 is 3 over 5 times 3, which is 15. So now I've got negative 10 over 15 plus 3 fifteenths. Of course, the signs are different, so we subtract and take the sign of the larger. That would be negative 7 over 15. So my final answer there will be negative 7 fifteenths. Okay, and here's some more examples of adding fractions with unlike denominators. This one we got three fourths plus one fifth. And then plus one sixth. Three fourths plus one fifth plus one sixth. Let's start with the fractions that are in the parentheses. In this case here, the LCD is 20. Okay, so if I want a denominator of 20, the numerator and the denominator must be multiplied by 5. Okay, so now 3 times 5 will be 15. So an equivalent fraction of 3 fourths would be 15. And then for the 1 fifth, if I want to make that an equivalent fraction with a denominator, denominator of 20, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4. So the numerator will be 1 times 4, which is 4, then plus 1 6. And in this case here, 15 twentieths plus 4 twentieths is 19 twentieths. So that's 19 over 20 plus 1 6. Now I need a least common denominator for 20 and 6. Okay, least common denominator in this case would be. Uh, it would be 60. So let's use 60 as the least common denominator. Okay. Now, to make this have a common denominator of 60, the numerator and the denominator must be multiplied by 3. Because to go from 20 to 60, I must multiply by 3. 
So 3 times 19 will be 57. And then for 1, 6, to make this 6 a 60, I must multiply by 10. And I also need to multiply the numerator by 10. So 1 times 10 is 10. So now we got 57 sixtieths plus 10 sixtieths. If we add those two together, you're going to get 67 over 60. Okay. So here the final answer there will be 67 over 60. Now for now, we're going to leave this as an improper fraction. Okay. All right, this next example is an algebra type problem that has x's and y's. Here we've got 3 over x plus 4 over y. 3 over x plus 4 over y. In this case here, we want the LCD of those two denominators. That's simply xy. Now, for 3 over x. If I want to make this an equivalent fraction with the denominator of xy, the numerator must be multiplied by y, and so must the denominator be multiplied by y. Plus, now then for 4 over y, I'm missing an x, so I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by x. That way I'm going to have in the numerator 3 over 3y three over xy plus 4x divided by xy. And since these two denominators are the same, I'll just go ahead and put, I could put the 4x first and then plus 3y if I want to. All that will be over xy. So you have 4x plus 3y all over xy. And here's another example. We got two a two over a squared b plus three over a b squared. Okay. Okay. To simplify this, we want the least common denominator. Now here we take each variable with the highest exponent. So the a, the highest exponent is a 2, so it'll be a squared. And then we use b with the highest exponent of 2, which is b squared. And then we write an equivalent fraction with the LCD of a squared b squared. Now for 2 over a squared b, if I want to make this a squared b, a squared b squared, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by b. And then 3ab squared, if I want to make that a, a squared b squared, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a. Because in this one, I'm missing an a, whereas in this one, I was missing a b. So the numerator will be 2b over a squared b squared plus 3a over a squared b squared. And since the denominators are the same, we can just rewrite this as, I'll just say 3a plus 2b. All that's divided by a squared b squared. And that would be my final answer. Okay, let's look at mixed numbers. Okay, numbers that are made up of an integer and a fractional part of an integer is considered to be a mixed number. Okay, and a mixed number is a rational number as well because it can always be written in the form a over b. Okay, so mixed numbers will have a whole number and then you have the fractional part that's behind it. And of course, mixed numbers are going to be rational numbers as well. Okay, let's look at some examples here. Let's say we want to change each of the following mixed numbers to, to the form a over b, where a and b are integers. In part a, you got 4 and 1 third. Okay. Now, the way we do that is we take the denominator and multiply it by the whole number, 
and then add the numerator. Now the denominator is going to remain the same, so we bring over the 3. But the, but the numerator, you'll take the 3, multiply by 4, you're going to get 12. Then 12 plus the 1 is 13. So 4 and 1 third as a fraction in the form of A over B would be 13 over 3. And if you recall, this is an improper fraction. And then part B, you have negative 3 and 2 fifths. Now we're going to bring over the negative, and our denominator is 5. In this case here, we're going to disregard the negative for now, and just multiply 3 times 5, that's going to give us 15, and then add 2 to the 15, you're going to get 17. So you're going to end up with negative 17 over 5 as a improper fraction in the form A over B. Okay, So that's how you convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction. And also 29 over 5 can be changed to a mixed number. Now, with this, you're going to have to use long division to convert something to a, mix, to a mixed number. You have to find out how many times 5 can go into 29. That's going to be 5. So you do 5 times 5, that's 25. 25 from 29 will give you 4. So the whole number is that quotient, which is 5. The remainder of 4 is your numerator. Your denominator that we're dealing with here is going to be 5. So 29 fifths as a mixed number will be 5 and 4 fifths. Okay. So in this case, you can use long division to find out to convert a mixed number to an improper, I mean, an improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay. Next is the properties of addition for rational numbers. Some of these are quite familiar. This one is the additive inverse property, where for any real number, rational number, a over b, there exists a unique rational number, negative a over b, called the additive inverse of a over b, such that a over b plus its additive inverse, or negative a over b plus its additive inverse, would give you zero. Okay. So any rational number plus its additive inverse will give you a sum of zero based on the additive inverse property. All right, next is some more properties of rational numbers. Here properties of the additive inverse for rational numbers are analogous to those of the additive inverse for integers. Okay, For integers, the opposite of negative a is a, and the opposite of the sum of a and b will be the opposite of a plus the opposite of b. It's the same thing for rational numbers. The opposite of negative a over b would be positive a over b. And the opposite of the sum of a over b and c over d would be the sum of the opposite of a over b plus a and the opposite of c over d. Okay. Okay. Next is the addition property of equality, where if a over b and c over d are any rational numbers such that a is equal a over b equals c over d and e, and if e over f is any rational number, then we can add that same rational number to both sides of the equation. Okay, because e over f is being added or subtracted from both sides of the equation and you'll still get a true equality. And subtraction of rational numbers is this. If a over b and c over d are any rational numbers, then a over b minus c over d is the unique rational number e over f such that a over b equals c over d and that's equal to e, f, e over f. And 
This rule applies if you are subtracting integers. That's simply adding the opposite. A over B minus C over D is equal to A over B plus negative C over D. That's when you subtract, you just simply add the opposite. This is analogous to the subtraction rule for integers, where you simply add the opposite. And then this one, this next one, this one where you have unlike uh, denominators, here we have AD minus BC divided by BD. You just multiply your two denominators there, and then your numerators are going to be the equivalent, will be part of the equivalent fractions with that common denominator. And here's some examples of just that. And I will work through a few these two. In this case here, we got 5 eighths minus 1 fourth. And I'm going to write this vertically so that you can get an idea how this is going to be going to be done. 5 eighths minus 1 fourth. Now, well, what we need is a least common denominator of 8 and 4. In this case here, it's going to be 8. Okay. Notice that these denominators are the same, so I'm going to go ahead and bring over the 5. But if I want to make 1 fourth an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 8, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. So now 1 times 2 will give me 2. So now I got 5 eighths minus 2 eighths. Okay, so the denominators are the same. I can subtract the numerators. 5 minus 2 will be 3. The denominator will be 8. So the final answer there will be 3 eighths. Okay, then the next one is 5 and 1 third minus 2 and 3 fourths. Now, most te most math textbooks in elementary and uh, some middle school textbooks show you that you have to do a little bit of regrouping with the whole number and then convert that whole number to an equivalent fraction and then add that fraction to what you already have and then do the subtraction. To me, there is an easier way to do this. And that is, convert these to improper fractions. For 5 and 1 third, if you do 3 times 5, that's going to give you 15, plus 1 will give you 16. So this will be 16 thirds. And then 2 and 3 fourths, convert that to an improper fraction. 2 times 4, that's 8, plus the 3 is 11. So this will be 11 fourths. So here you get 16 thirds minus 11 fourths. Now we can find the least common denominator for 16 thirds and 11 fourths. But for 3 and 4, that least common denominator is 12. Okay, now, if I want to make 16 thirds an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4. So now 4 times 16, that's 64. Over 4 times 3 will be 12. Now for the 11 fourths, if I want to make that an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12, I need to multiply by 3 in the numerator and the denominator. So 3 times 11 will be 33 over 12. So now we got 64 twelfths minus 33 twelfths. Subtract those, you're going to get 31 twelfths. Now, 31 twelfths we can convert to, an, to a mixed number. We want to find out how many times 12 goes into 31. That's going to go two times. Now, you can do the long division, and you'll see that if you multiply, <coughs> if you multiply 12 times 2, you're going to get 24. 24 from 31, that will give you the 7. So that whole number, that's your 2. The 7 is your numerator, and your 12 is your denominator. 
and we can, and this is written in simplest form. So two and seven twelfths will be the final answer to five and one thirds minus two and three fourths. Okay, this right here, that approach is much easier to do than doing the method of regrouping. Just convert each mixed number to an improper fraction, and then find the least common multiple of those two. Okay, here we can add or subtract here, and then write those answers in simplest form. We got x over 2 plus x over 3. Okay. The least common denominator is 6 for 2 and 3. Okay. So if I want to make x over 2 have a least common denominator of 6, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. So this top would be 3 times x, or 3x. And then for x over 3, I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 to get a common denominator of 6. So 2 times x is 2x. So I got 3x over 6 plus 2x over 6. Well, the denominators are the same, so I can rewrite this as 3x plus 2x all over 6. Now I can combine like terms here, 3x and 2x, that's 5x over 6. So here we got 5x over 6 as our final answer. Okay, and here's another example, just like this one, more algebraic. 2 minus x over 6 minus 3x. plus 4 minus 2x over 3x minus 6. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is going to be done. Pretty much you're going to have to do some factoring first and just do some simplifying. That 2 minus x, I'm going to bring that over. Now look at 6 minus 3x. It has a common factor in it. For 6 and a minus 3x, the common factor is a 3. So I can pull out a 3. Now, 6 divided by 3 would be the 2. That 2 goes inside. Then minus 3x divided by 3 would just be x. And then plus. Now, for the 4 minus 2x, there is a common factor. Which is going to be. And actually, notice I got 4 minus 2x and then 3x minus 6 in the denominator. Let me start with the denominator here, because I can pull out the 3. And then what's going to be left is just going to be x minus 2. Okay, but here if I want to make this x minus, if I want to put the x in front of it, I need to pull out negative 2. You're going to see why. Because this is what's going to happen. Negative 2x divided by negative 2 will be x. And then 4 divided by negative 2 will be minus 2. Okay, now you can see that I can uh, cancel some terms out. Like this x minus 2 can be canceled. 2 minus x can be canceled. I'm going to put a 1 up here. Which means this is going to simplify to 1 third plus negative two-thirds. Well, one-third plus negative two-thirds, the denominators are the same. I can add the numerators. One plus negative two would just simply be negative one over three. And that would be my final answer right there. Okay, so in some cases, you may have to do some factoring and divide out some expressions before you can um, do the addition because that would be much easier to do it that way. And notice in this particular way that they did it, they say if x is not equal to 2, which means if x was 2, then this would not work the uh, denominators. The That x equals 2 would give me a denominator of 0 here. Okay. 
And here's another one. 2 over a plus b minus 2 over a minus b. Two over a plus b minus two over a minus b. Okay. In this case here, the LCD is going to be a plus b times a minus b. A plus b times a minus b. That's going to be your LCD. Now, the first term is two over a plus b. If I want to make that first term have this common denominator, I'm missing a minus b. So I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a minus b. And then for the 2 over a minus b, I'm missing a plus b. So I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a plus b. I think I can put an equal sign in front of it. Now let's simplify the numerator and the denominator. Here we got two parentheses a minus b minus two parentheses a plus b. All that's divided by a plus b times a minus b. Now let's simplify the numerator. Using the distributive property two times a that's two a minus 2 times b, that's 2b. And then minus 2 times a will be minus 2a. Minus 2 times b will be minus 2b. And all that's going to be divided by a plus b times a minus b. Now to simplify this, the 2a's will give me a sum of 0, so that's gone. So negative 2b minus 2b would be a negative 4b. All that's divided by a plus b times a minus b. And that would be as far as I can go with that particular problem here. And here in this particular problem, they simplified this as a squared minus b squared by just multiplying, because since this is a sum and the difference of the same two terms, they squared the first term minus the square of the last term. Okay, another problem. One, one over x minus one over two x squared. Okay, in this case here, one over x minus 1 over 2x squared. The least common denominator here, we see a 2, and for the x we use the highest exponent, x squared. So 2x squared will be your least common denominator. Now for this one, if we want to make 1 over x have a least common denominator of 2x squared, we're missing a 2 and an x. So we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2x. Okay. Then minus. Now notice that 2x squared is the same as the least common denominator, so we already have our 2x squared, so we'll bring that down. Now multiply 1 times 2x, that's going to be 2x. The denominator x times 2x is 2x squared minus 1 over 2x squared. And since the denominators are the same, I'll just bring just rewrite this as 2x minus 1 over 2x squared. And that's going to be as far as I can go with that problem. Okay. okay. Next we'll talk about estimation with rational numbers. Many of the estimation and mental math techniques that are used with whole numbers also work with rational numbers. Estimation plays an important role in judging the reasonable reasonableness of computations. 
like in this example, a sixth grade class is collecting cans to take to the recycling center. Becky's group dropped the following amounts in pounds. About how many pounds does her group have all together? In this case, you got one eighth, one and one eighth, three and four tenths, five and seven eighths, six tenths. So if you use front end estimation and then adjust by using zero, one half, and one as reference points. Here we can come up with our estimate. So in this case here, here's the front end estimate, which is one plus three plus five, which is nine. Okay, because here we got the one, then the three, and the five. So we add those, you're gonna get nine. And then the adjustment for the one eighth is gonna be zero. Four tenths, that's close to one half, so we'll use one half. Seven eighths is close to one. Six tenths is close to one half. So here you got zero, one half, one, and two. Add those together, you'll get two. And then add nine plus two, you're going to get 11. So the adjusted estimate would be 11. So if we want to estimate 27 thirteenths plus 10 over 9, well, 27 over 13, that's a little bit more than 2. So we'll estimate that as 2. 10 ninths is a little bit more than 1, so we'll estimate that as 1. So 2 plus 1 would give you 3. So that estimate of that sum of 27 thirteenths and 10 ninths would be 3. And finally, 3 ninths plus 2 and 7, 3 and 9 tenths, plus 2 and 7 eighths, plus 11 twelfths. In this case here, 3 and 9 tenths is close to 4, so we'll round that off to 4. 2 and 7 eighths is close to 3, so we'll round that off to 3. 11 tenths is almost 1, so we'll round that off to 1. So 4 plus 3 plus 1 will give us an estimate of 8. Okay. And that would conclude this particular section on addition, subtraction, and estimation with rational numbers.